Hi everyone, this is uh, part one of Ensemble Techniques and in this video we'll look at the definition of ensembles, definition of bass learners and how to generate bass learners. Then we'll look at the mathematical properties of why ensembles work. So we'll, look at the exp we'll explore the properties and look at the probability distributions that are favoring the ensembles. Then we'll look at the definition of two popular approaches to ensemble, which is boosting and bagging. Okay. The main aim of ensembling techniques is to achieve low bias, low variance by combining multiple models together. Okay. So let's say you have individual models that have high variance but low bias. And then by combining the outputs of your independent individual models, it is possible for us to derive a low variance model while still maintaining low bias. Okay. And on the same set on the same note, if you have models which have high bias, then we can still build ensembles out of them which can lower your bias. Okay. For all this, you're dependent on models which we will be calling them as base learners. So let's now define what base learners are. So base learners are independent models that are combined during the ensembling process for us to achieve the final output. Okay. Then the question is, how are we going to generate these base learners? So there are n number of ideas to do it. And I'll give you three of them, which is number one, if you have uh, an algorithm, let's say addition trees, then you can use that same algorithm and generate different base learners by just differing the hyperparameters of your um, addition tree. Okay. The second way to generate base learners is to use completely different algorithms. Okay. So those algorithms could be uh, regression, linear regression could be one of your uh, base learner. Your quadratic regression could be another base learner. Your addition trees could be another base learner. So that's that's one another approach. And the third approach to generate base learners is to use different data set or feature space of for the same algorithm. Okay. So for your addition tree, for example, if that is the algorithm you have chosen, then by differing the data you're feeding into the tree and differing the feature set that you're feeding into the tree, you can generate different base learners. One very important property in a base learner that we look for is that they need to be independent. What that means is your predictions should have a low correlation across the different sets of base learners. So each base learner will be low correlated with one another when it comes to the prediction of your outputs. Okay, so now let's look at why it works, why ensembles work. So we'll take an example here. Then once we have the intuition in place, we will generalize the mathematics. So let's say you have three base learners. Base learner one, which has an accuracy 70%. Base learner two, which also has accuracy 70%. Base learner three, which has again an accuracy of 70%. Okay, what that means is 70% of the time, each of these learners are correct, and 30% of the time, they are incorrect. Okay, so now let's ask the question, what would be the accuracy score of an ensemble if we were to put them together? Okay, and the answer is, it is at least 78%. Okay, so now we're going to look at why that 78% comes. So for that, first, let's now look at the probability chart for having generated across the three ensembles. So first we are starting with the first ensemble. It has a 70% chance of being correct, which is marked as C in the chart. And then it has a 30% chance of being an error, which is marked as E in the chart. Then the second ensemble kicks in sequentially. From here, again, you have a 70% chance of being correct and a 30% chance of being in an error following which the third ensemble again sequentially kicks in where you have a 70% chance of being correct and a 30% chance of being in an error. Okay. So now let's assume we have built this tree for each of the nodes for the three ensembles that I've just shown you. What tends to happen is the probability of 
all the three ensembles being correct is 0 0.7 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.7, which happens to be 34.3%. And the probability of at least two ensembles being correct, which are marked in yellow, is these three rows where we have 0 0.7 times 0 0.7 times 0.3, which is 0.14 and 0 0.7 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.7, which is again 0.147, and 0 0.3 into 0 0.7 times 0 0.7, which again is 0 0.147. So what this means to us is the probability of getting all the ensembles being correct, all the models in the ensemble being correct is 34%. The probability that two of the models are correct is comes to 44%, because we have added these three probability calculations together to, to get the 44%. And therefore, we can conclude that our ensemble will at least be 78% correct on a lower end. Okay, So that's the key difference in how the probability is in favor of the ensembles. Since we made earlier an assumption that each of our base learner is independent of each other, we can generalize this using a binomial distributions probability mass function, which happens to be this equation. Okay, So let's now first start looking into that equation to try and get a, get a good feel for it. This is the probability of getting exactly k of our base learners to be successful out of the n base learners that we have within the system. Okay, Now, the, the right side of this equation can be very well understood by making a note that p is the probability of success. Then for us to achieve k successes, the k successes occur with the probability p power k. And n minus k failures occur with the probability 1 minus p, the whole power n minus k. Okay, So those, that's those two terms. Now, the k successes can occur in any sequence, they can be distributed over a sequence of n trials or the uh, n uh, base learners which we currently have in our system. Therefore, we are doing a, a k choose n out here to finally create the probability mass function. Okay, And k choose n is defined as n factorial by k factorial times n minus k the whole factorial. So this is one of the basics coming off from our binomial distribution. And this is a general way with which now we're going to be looking always for the calculation of how to understand the probabilities for an ensemble. OK? Now let's ask the question, what happens when we have increased our base classifiers within the entire system of ensembles? Now for that, we draw the binomial distribution using the probability mass function which we have out here. And for the minute, I want you guys to focus on this 10 as the base learner. And assume we have currently 10 base learners. However, if we are going to increase the base learners in our ensemble system, then with the probability distribution, if we calculate the area under this particular mass, making an assumption that we increased it from 10 to 13, then the probability of the overall error rate going wrong, which means probability that the system is wrong, is only 3.8%. OK. So I repeat, the probability that the number of base learners increased after the 10 would significantly be reduced to a 3.8% being the failure rate of the overall system. Okay. Therefore, the probability of greater than 10 base learners being wrong is only 3.8%. Okay. All right. So now let's look at the popular approaches that are used in the ensemble techniques. So one of them is called bagging, where we are actually taking unstable models with a low bias and combining them to be an ensemble, whereby we achieve 
to reduce variance, so whereby we do reduce variance and still maintain the bias. And the second technique that is popularly used is boosting, which is building models sequentially. So building base learners sequentially for tougher problems based on the errors of the previously built base learner. And in this particular case, it targets to reduce both bias and variance. Okay. So that's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and stay tuned for the next parts of Ensemble Techniques.